Hello, my name is Keegan Bernrider from the Onega High School media team, and welcome to the Onega High School basketball postseason interviews. First up, we have Lane Kress interviewing Mr. Calloway. Hello, I'm Lane Kress with the Onega High School media team. With me today is Mr. Calloway, the Onega High School, school goals basketball coach. So, Mr. Calloway, how did the team do this season? Um, our record wasn't indicative of how the season actually went. Um, you know, we started the year with Next to no experience um, coming back uh, as far as the varsity level. So, I mean, it was a learning process all the way through. We finished the year 1-20, and um, but we actually improved probably more than any of the teams in the three years I've been here um, because of where we started at to where we finished. Um, you know, obviously you'd always like to have more wins than that, but, um, you know, I was happy with the progress we made as a team this year. What were some, what were some things you, the team improved on from the beginning of the season? Um, number one, you know, at the beginning of the year, turnovers were a real big issue for us, and we got better as the year went. Um, obviously, we were never to the point where I was completely happy with it, and I don't think you ever will be as a coach um, on that. Um, but, you know, playing together as a team and our offense and stuff, we got better. Um, and especially after the second half of the season, after – the TVL League tournament, I felt like we kind of started to find ourselves what we could do offensively and couldn't do and stuff. Um, you know, defensively, I think we continued to get better. And the one thing we were able to do between our offense and defense was start to control the pace of games with a lot of teams. Um, we play such a brutal schedule that sometimes you don't necessarily notice that in the score, but a lot of teams we held them be below their season average in points. What seniors will you lose, and how would those leaving affect the team? Uh, we had four seniors. Um, each kind of had a varying different degree of impact on the team. Um, Belinda Ames, by far, is playing time and stuff. She was the most impactful in that sense. Um, she, you know, leading scorer, leading rebounder and stuff, uh, main ball handler for majority of the season and stuff. So we'll definitely... Um, mess her and her athletic ability to be in there. Um, Kendall Crone came back late in the year, recovered from a knee injury that um, caused her to mess three-fourths three of the year, really. Um, you know, we're going to mess the, the calming influence she had on the others. Um, you know, she only played, I believe, five games on the year, but it's amazing her how calm she remained on the court and stuff and that really helped I think the younger girls in them games that she was able to be in there and then the other two Tyra Tessendorf and Bethany Eisenbarf didn't have the playing time impact but they both were members of the team that you know did things outside of necessarily playing time and stuff like that. What did you want from this year that you will take into future seasons? Oh, I think every year you learn different things about, you know, different offenses or different defenses you can run. Um, you learn about the different girls you have on the team, um, what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are. Um, so I don't know if there's any one thing I could put my finger on that say, well, this is the one thing we're going to take into next year. Um, there's a lot of things. Um, sometimes I feel like you, you learn things that you can do on years that you do struggle offensively and okay well we can adjust this and we have some success so when you do have teams that have the ability to maybe score easier than what we did this year um, you can use them things so there'll be a you know vast majority of that stuff is the stuff that I'll carry on and take into um, seasons going on into the future. Well thank you for the interview and I wish you luck in your future. Thank you Lynn. Thank you, Lane, for that interview. Next up, we have Emma Zell interviewing Mr. Baxter. Hi, my name is Emma Lynn Zell, and I'm here with Coach Baxter of the boys' basketball team for the 2017-18 season. How do you feel about this being the end of the season, and what will you miss about the seniors who are leaving this year? Well, any time you get to the end of the season, um, you always kind of have mixed emotions. It's a basketball is it's a it's a long season. Um, it's it, I've heard a lot of people say it's a marathon, but, um, you know, it, it was sad, 
it's always sad when you when seniors move on and and uh, and I I felt like we could have done a little more, but I was proud of the way the the kids always played hard and, and always did what I asked them to. So I was very proud of that. But um, what will I miss? You know, you you miss the seniors. You miss. Uh, it's just every year you're you're gonna lose players and 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 you have to find ways to move on. Indeed. And how did the team stack up into comparison with your expectations for them? Well, I knew we were going to struggle at the beginning of the year uh, with not many, uh, not a lot of experience coming back, and uh, we had a really good season last year, and and I knew we were going to be young and inexperienced, and I thought it took us a lot longer to develop chemistry, and and uh, but at the same time, like I said earlier, I I really thought they always played hard, they always had a good attitude, and and when kids do that, you know, I, the rest usually takes care of itself, so I was, I was very proud of them for the way they, they approach the game and they approach the season, especially to, all the way to the end. Yeah, they did well this year. What strengths did you find in your team? Well, um, you know, I, to be honest with you, kind of goes back to what I said earlier. I, I thought whether things were going good or bad, they always approached every game with a positive attitude and and uh, and the belief that they could win the game and sometimes you know if you lose three four or five games in a row a lot of teams kind of maybe not the the physical effort maybe be there, but the mental efforts not and I always thought they approached the games with with a solid mental effort every time and and I thought I thought that was a, a strength of theirs and they uh, they really stuck together I was I was proud of the way they they uh, they stayed as a team and and uh, even through bad times I thought they they played they played together. They did. And how do you feel about this being the conclusion to your nine-year coaching career? Well, it's kind of a kind of a weird feeling. Um, uh, you know, after that last game, I I uh, I, I knew that was that was it for. For uh, coaching high school, uh, at least for a long time, probably maybe my kids get up there and they get desperate for a coach. Maybe I'll do it again at the high school level, but um, I'll miss it. I'll miss the relationships that um, that I that I developed over the years, and and uh, it was a uh, it was a good run. We did a lot of good things, but uh, all good things must come to an end. Indeed. And what's your fondest memory of your basketball career? Well, you know, I've got a lot of memories of the last nine years, uh, the boys. Um, you know, I'd say there's a couple things that stick out to me. My, my first year, um, we were coming off of, uh, the boys' basketball were coming off of nine wins in four years. So they've been kind of struggling a little bit. And uh, that first year... I really remember seeing that team start to believe in themselves, and it's really the that first entire season to see where we came from the beginning to the end, and uh, that that year was really special. To uh, we went finished the season, we went on the road and and beat the number three ranked team in this, in three A, and, uh, and then we go or one point away from winning our sub-state game and that team goes on to get third in the state so um, to, to see where we started that year to where we finished especially our mindset it was uh, really amazing and I was very proud of that team but and obviously probably the next fondest memory is probably going to state last year and winning sub-state um, uh, I've never had goosebumps on my arms that long so uh, apparently that was a that was a special moment and in my career, yeah. So it was uh, I and I have others, but those are probably the two that stick out the most to me over the last nine years of uh, coaching boys. All right, thank you. Yep, thank you. Thank you, Emma, for that interview. This concludes the Onega High School basketball postseason interviews. Stay tuned for more interviews.
open to the pharmacy to see our wide variety of gifts. We are now accepting all insurance plans at the pharmacy. And we're still carrying a good selection of cards for any occasion. Service with a smile. Coming soon, the soda fountain will be back. Come to Charlie's Bar and Grill for good food and great company. Check out Charlie's Facebook page for new daily specials. Hours include Sunday through Tuesday, 11 to 2, Wednesday through Thursday, 11 to 8, Friday through Saturday, 11 to 9. And make sure to stop in Sunday for our home style meals. Come shop at Omega Country Market. Fresh meat cut daily. Come check out our deli. Hours include Monday through Saturday, 7 to 7, on Sunday, 10 to 4. Come on in to Farmer's State Bank. There are locations in Manhattan, Westmoreland, and Onega. Check out our online banking and our banking app. Come in on Fridays for coffee, tea, and cookies. Member FDIC. Bob Service, 200 Letter Street. Onega, Kansas, 66521. Phone number 75. 889-4321 Specializing in auto and truck repair For all of your vision care, please visit Family Eye Care in offices in Wamego, Onega, and St. Mary's. Dr. Keeker's offices are open Monday through Thursday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Please call 785-889-4387 in Onega to make your appointment today. Onega Ag and Auto. Hours, Monday through Friday, 8 to 12 and 1 to 6. Open Saturdays, 8 to noon. Onega Ag and Auto has Napa Auto Parts, Husqvarna, and they repair equipment, both auto and trucks. Omega Ag and Auto. Come to the Jay Bird Motel. Call 785-889-7105.
or check out our Facebook page for availability. Kitchenette and full bath available in some rooms. Facilities, cable, and Wi-Fi in every room. Located 501 Western Street, Onega, Kansas. J. Bird Motel. Come to Creations by Carla for all your styling needs. Dying and cutting hair. Shellac and acrylic nails. Tanning beds and spray tans. Call 785-889-4941. Creations by Carla. The Animal Health Clinic of Onega is a full-service small animal veterinary clinic. We pride ourselves in caring for your pets as if they were our own. We provide small animal medical, surgical, and dental services. Our clinic has in-house laboratory and radiology equipment to provide immediate results when they are needed. We also provide grooming and boarding. We sell Hills Science and Prescription Diets. Please call us the next time your pet needs special attention at 785-889-4246. Our hours are Mondays 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Tuesdays through Friday 9 to 4.30. Saturdays are by appointment.